How's it going YouTube? It's your place here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another book video guys. If you remember I said in December that I was going to start doing more book videos like TBRs and wrap ups for the months that I've read them books and giving opinions and ratings and things of what I thought of them. And yeah, so we're going to do that today. I'm going to do my December wrap up. I know it's a bit late because it's like, what, the 6th of January now? <laughs> so I'm six days a bit too late. But anyways, we're going to do it. Um, If you remember on the previous video, I read, I said that I was going to read six festive books for the December season. I ended up actually reading seven. And they're all pretty romance based books, which is really surprising for me because I'm normally into like crime um book sort of thing so reading these ones for christmas with them all being lovey-dovey and romantic was really odd for me because I, I i'm not really a romance reader but i enjoyed them anyways i did enjoy them so we're gonna see so yeah, i'm gonna do my review of the book so let's get into it guys okay so the first book i read in december was miss at home mansion by samantha tong um this wasn't on my list to read originally but i had it in my cupboard for ages so i decided to read it because it's a Christmassy book, so yeah. This was, I read this one as well. Um, this is about a woman called Kimmy, and she lives with her boyfriend Adam, and she wants to start her own cupcake business called Kimmy's Cupcakes. Um, but Adam doesn't think it's a good idea because he's like, he likes to be financially stable, so he doesn't think it's a good idea for her to quit a job and try and start a business because he likes a steady income. So she basically boots him to the curb, and she's now homeless. And she's got a friend called Jess who lives with her brother. And her brother kind of treats her like a maid sort of thing. So she's getting sick of living with him. So she kind of moves out. So they're both homeless now. So her and Kimmy pretend that they're house sitters, professional house sitters. And they land a gig at Mr. Tom Mansion to look after the house and try and get it to sell before Christmas. Because the owner wants to sort up before Christmas. But we had things happen in the house. So it puts off potential buyers, it puts off the house sitters, so house sitters haven't been staying for very long. And they believe there's a good spirit, which is the owner of the house previously who died. And then they believe there's a evil spirit doing things as well in the house. So they believe there's two spirits in the house. So they get paranormal investigators and things in. And Kimmy focuses on our cupcake business while she's there. And there's a handyman there who also works there called Luke. And he's a distraction, but he's also a bit of a twat <laughs> he treats her he's nice to her one minute and then the next minute he's like horrible to her so it's kind of like an enemies to lovers sort of build up of romance in this one because like i said one minute he's nice and the next minute he's not and she starts to try and get a cupcake business off the ground and she meets a celebrity next door whose wife was interested in trying our cakes out for a party she did and her friends also like the cakes that um kimmy made so they start booking her for other events and passing her on on Instagram and things. And she starts getting a really good build up of like orders and things. So a business starts taking off, but like loads of things start to contradict it. Like, but when a business starts to take off, it, she starts to kind of like become a little bit famous because of it. Um, and obviously she's got a famous friend next door and she kind of sees all the, hardships of being famous but yeah she finds out that fame and fortune isn't as always cracked up to be but it's mostly her trying to figure out what's going on in the house getting a cupcake business off the ground and trying to figure out what's going on with luke in like relationship wise i guess um but yeah i did give this one four stars so this was a good read so if you want to pick it up then i would recommend it so yeah this is about reggie and dina the two sisters Reggie moves away with her fiancé, um, but unfortunately she got dumped all in a weekend. She got engaged from on the Friday, they had the party on the Saturday, and she dumped. She got jumped, dumped on the Sunday, which is pretty nasty, man. Now, what would you do that for? Like, and then we've got Dina, her sister, who runs the B and B that our grandparents passed down, and she's also a teacher at the local school as well, so she does them two things. The mother and father are planning to renew their vows, so Reggie comes back up home to help her mum organise the wedding and she runs into her old flame Toby who she used to date in high school but he had like an abusive upbringing so he kind of like left and dumped Reggie and didn't tell her why he kind of just 
dumped that and left town and like never came back. And he's recently come back because he's had a son called Harrison and he's opened up he's got like a pie business, so he's cut he's brought the pie business back home. Um so he's there permanently now with his son Harrison, who's also in Dina's class. And she's she organises like Christmas activities leading up to Christmas. Um so the knitting hats for um homeless children and children who don't have a lot, so she asks Reggie to lead the project because her mum can't lead it and Dina has to have help with it. So Reggie agrees, but she doesn't know that Toby's son is part of the class. So when she goes to the the first class, she runs into Toby and yeah, they kind of realise that they still have feelings for each other. But Toby doesn't want to get involved in another relationship because something bad happened to Harrison, so he's protecting Harrison as well. So he doesn't feel like getting into a relationship because he's scared. So yeah, Harrison starts a woman to Reggie, so Toby kind of comes down to the idea that he wants, he kind of wants a relationship, but he's still on the fence about it. So it's like a slow build-up of romance of will he or won't he pursue the relationship with Reggie. On the other side, we have Dina, who is a single pregnant woman, and she got pregnant because she didn't think she would find anyone to settle down with and start a family so she had IVF to bring up a family herself but a guy called Mika who is a singer checks into the B&B &B that she owns and yeah he starts to fall for her and she starts to fall for him but she doesn't think that he's gonna date her because she's like a normal person um so she doesn't know anything about the, like the rock star lifestyle the famous lifestyle and things like that so she doesn't think that he would go for her, but their romance starts to slowly kindle up throughout the book. And it's a really, really nice read. It's a really wholesome read. And yeah, I really suggest you read this if you're interested in it. So I gave this one four stars as well. So this was a good read as well. So let's go on to the next one. The next one I read was The Merry Christmas Project by Kathy Bromley. This is about a woman called Mary who lives with her boyfriend Daniel they go for a walk somewhere and she proposes to Daniel and he says no because he doesn't want any like serious commitments so he doesn't want children he doesn't want marriage anything like that he's happy just the way the relationship is but she wants more she wants kids she wants marriage so she kind of like dumps him so she moves out and moves into rented accommodation she starts up a candle business why she is in this rented accommodation she gets involved in the christmas project like the organizing a festival um for the light switch on and things and so daniel brings an old flame to the meeting and she puts her ideas forward so mary being jealous because it's still a fresh wound because it just recently broke up she puts her idea forward as well and her oh. idea actually gets chosen so she has to do the project on top of a candle business and it just causes a lot of stress. And then we have Cole, whose ex-wife and two kids have gone away on vacation for Christmas. So he doesn't want to celebrate Christmas without them. So he throws himself into work because um, he's like a construction worker. He's got various estates and businesses. The, co the people who he hires to get rid of like the materials that he's using the throat in the river and it it's out the river's at behind the rented accommodation that Mary has. So her house starts to flood, which is owned by Cole. So when he goes to see Mary for the first time, he feels something towards her. And then she starts to have feelings for him. So it's like a slow build up romance. So with the accommodation becoming flooded, Cole comes to the rescue so Mary can carry on her candle making business and the Christmas project and he sets her up in the bank that he rents with his sister so she's holed up in there trying to work on everything and he starts to help her out a lot more so he goes there to fix like lights and things so he does like maintenance work and stuff and they start to, like the feelings start to like rise so everyone can see that they're made for each other but it's if they act on them feelings because they do feel something for each other but it's a slow build up to see if they actually will make something of their feelings and act upon it but yeah again i give this another four star i give this one a four star so it was another good read so yeah if you're interested in this then i recommend picking it up next one i read was the christmas escape by sarah morgan this is about christy and seb they met on a night out 
they got introduced by Christy's friend Alex to like there was a group of them and Seb was one of them people in that group and him and Christy hit it off but Alex didn't really like the idea of them starting anything because she knew what he was like she knew that he liked to sleep around and he was a like bachelor sort of thing so she wasn't keen on it so when Christy and Seb had a night together and she fell pregnant with Holly she actually went through with the pregnancy so they had Holly and got married and on the day of the wedding Alex told Christy what she thought Seb that it wasn't gonna work he was gonna cheat again and think he was gonna cheat on her and things like that because he was he can't be tied down sort of thing so that caused a bit of friction between their friendship they used to tell each other everything but now they, they don't really tell each other everything so if something is wrong with them they don't tell each other and they're planning to take holly to lapland for christmas and alex is coming along with them but leading up to the vacation seb seb starts acting weird and like staying late at um work he's having very he's keep having various meetings and things so christy gets a bit anxious and suspicious she finds an email on his laptop from a woman so she automatically thinks he's cheating but when he gets home he tells her that he can't go to Lapland for the first few days that they've planned to go and that he would follow on with them after um his meeting because he says he has a meeting so his plan is to go to this meeting then follow on after to try and save her marriage and to figure out what's going on she asks her friend Alex to take Holly to Lapland in advance and then they them two would follow on when Seb had his meeting and it was over. Alex is a bit hesitant about it but she does agree but Seb isn't convinced that she can handle it on her own so Seb asks his friend Zach to jump in and take um Holly with Alex and Alex isn't happy about that either because her and Zach have a history but she does still agree to go anyways because she wants to do it for Holly and she wants to do this favour for a friend but she actually finds out that Seb has lost his job and that's the reason he's staying back because he's got interviews so she agrees to stay back with him and try and support him through it all because he finally tells her what's what's wrong so Alex and Zach take Holly to Lapland and their old feelings start to rekindle for each other but Alex is scared to get in a relationship because she doesn't think that she she's capable of love she doesn't think she's capable of being loved so she's hesitant of letting her feelings out for zach like letting him know that she still has feelings for him or letting them feelings come out so she kind of beats horrible the women things but he knows her too well and he knows that it's just an act it's just a front so they start to rekindle their relationship christy and seb relationship starts to rekindle when they spend some time together away from holly and away from everyone um and then they follow on a few days later and they'll have a really really nice christmas and yeah it's a really good a really good read it's really wholesome it's really nice and yeah i gave it a four star as well so yeah the next one i read was midnight in the snow by karen swan okay so this is about a director called clover phillips um, she made a movie on a guy called Corey Albright. Um, Corey was a professional surfer and he was in a competition with a guy called Kit. And Kit sabotaged Corey's last wave for the competition. So Corey ended up falling off his board and going under, which caused him, and it was a big wave, so he was under there for a long time before he got pulled out. So unfortunately, he had a brain injury which caused him to lose all his motor skills and things his memory so so he basically lost all his sponsorships he couldn't surf anymore um so he wasn't bringing any income he needed around the clock care which is expensive clover had done a movie on the effects of Corey's life after the accident and unfortunately they started to lose things because Corey couldn't um surf anymore so he couldn't bring in money he didn't have any sponsorships so his wife had to break that they had to sell up the house and move so Corey couldn't take him because he had already lost so much and unfortunately goes on and allows himself so then clover gets another project to go and make a movie on kit and get his side of the story and what happened on that day of the competition and why he sabotaged Corey and things because he's never really spoke about it because once the controversy happened and the film came out, he 
lost his reputation in surfing so he kind of hit rock bottom with it he lost all these sponsorships as well and he decided to move on to snowboarding because it's pretty similar skills so he goes on to snowboarding and she goes out to the alps with her team to try and get his side of the story but he's really adamant of not talking about it. he doesn't like her he doesn't want to make this movie but his sponsorships tell him that he has to make this movie so he can get his reputation back once clover gets there with her team they start film they start trying to film but he doesn't want to do any interviews or anything so she's trying to convince him to do it by like obviously getting to know him a bit more but he's like he still doesn't like her because of what she did to him and they start to slowly we like they start to slowly get feelings for each other but they don't admit it to they don't admit it to themselves they're kind of like in denial about it but they do like have like intercourse and things <laughs> they do the nasty and things but they're still adamant that they hate each other but they obviously don't so it's like a so it's like an enemy to lover sort of romance <laughs> so it's them trying to convince him to do this movie as well as them to dealing with the feelings they have for each other but that they think they hate each other and they don't actually hate each other so it's like a slow build up of it enemies to romance sort of thing so yeah this was a really good read um and i gave this one a four star the next one i read was christmas for beginners by carol matthews okay so this is about molly baker and she owns a farm called hope farm and it's for kids with autism behavioral issues mental health issues disabilities to be able to go somewhere and still have an education and still learn things so they all help out on the farm and it's actually based on a real farm that helps kids with autism mental health issues and behavioral issues which is really really nice such as like based on a real place which is really awesome and it's really nice that there's a place like that for people so they can go and get an education and escape like the real world and just mellow out for a bit uh, molly is with an actor called shelby shelby actually came to the farm for his son lucas who has behavioral issues and um, because he lost his mum he didn't know how to control them feelings and where to put them feelings or how to deal with them. So Shelby brought him to the farm in hopes that it would help him out. And Shelby and Molly actually fell for each other and they started having a, they started a relationship. And Lucas moved in the caravan that's on the farm where Molly lives. So he lives with Molly in the caravan. Um, Shelby doesn't live on the farm because he's always away and he's allergic to the animals and farm life isn't really for him even though he plays an actor for a farm he doesn't like the farm life or anything like that so they're not really well suited for each other because she loves the farm she braves the farm you know she just she just wants to be on the farm constantly she doesn't like to go to places um she's pretty much an introvert who likes to just stay on her farm but obviously the only way they can get funds is by doing fundraiser so she's planning a christmas fundraiser where there's going to be a nativity santa claus um light switch on of the christmas tree things like that and she's asked shelby to be the celebrity guest to turn on the lights but obviously he has other plans for christmas and he actually accepts a panto contract um so he's going to be way all the way up until the first of december to christmas eve Obviously, Molly isn't happy about it, but there's nothing she can do because it's his job at the end of the day. Lucas and Shelby have a very strained relationship because of what his father does and the fact that they can't go anywhere without being without Shelby being recognised and them being disturbed when they go out. And yeah, he's never around, so Lucas doesn't feel like he has a, fa a solid father figure around, so they don't really get on. Um, so he just stays with Molly at the farm and just works there for her while they're trying to get the fundraiser organized the mayor actually shows up um because he wants a charity to help fundraise at his next charity ball so he's picked molly's farm to be that spon to be a sponsor for so he is a country boy from a young age so he was brought up on a farm as well so he loves helping molly out and getting stuck in and she starts to realize that she's not really best suited to shelby and she starts to gain feelings for the mayor because he's more suited he likes to be on the farm he likes helping out and he's just a really nice guy so she tries to hide them feelings and mass them feelings and like deny them feelings because obviously she's still with shelby but when shelby comes back on christmas eve to tell her that he's actually going to america after he finishes the panto 
So he'd be flying out on Christmas Day to do a movie in Hollywood. And yeah, she's had enough. She's like, I can't do this anymore. It's not an ideal situation for me. It's not an ideal situation for Lucas. Um, so Lucas stays, chooses to stay with her because he doesn't like his father anyways. So he chooses to stay with her. They break up and then things kick off with the mayor. So it's a really, really wholesome story. It's a, it's a lovely read. I really, really fully enjoyed this one. This was my only five star read out of the seven that I read. So I highly recommend this book if you want a wholesome read. So yeah. The next one that I read was Christmas Wishes at the Chocolate Shop by Jessica Redland. This is about a woman called Charlie who um, lives in Hull with her grandparents because her mum walked out on her when she was a young child and she never knew who her father was. And her grandpa owned a chocolate shop who he passed down to a family friend um, before he passed away because he couldn't handle it anymore. And, and Charlie was still employed in that chocolate shop. But Charlie's boyfriend, Ricky, um, loses his job. So he moves back home to Whitborough Bay and he convinces Charlie to move with him and open up her own chocolate shop, which she's on the fence about, but she does come around the idea and she packs up and moves to Whitborough Bay with Ricky and starts her own chocolate shop. But when she gets there, um, Ricky's demeanour towards her changes like a lot. Like, he starts to become really mean to her. He's constantly out with the boys. He doesn't give her any attention. When she asks for help in the shop, he doesn't, he won't help her out. Even though it was his idea for her to come and do it in the first place. And he said he would support her and things. But he doesn't help her out or anything. And unfortunately, she has a plumbing emergency in the shop. And one of the lovely ladies at another shop recommends Matt. Because he's a plumber and he's just recently come into the committee of traders um so she recommends him and he comes straight away because he's only five minutes away and instantly when these guys meet they feel electricity between them between them she's with ricky so she can't act on them feelings and he has a fiance himself so he can act on the feelings but they know it's there and it's them trying to kind of like deny them feelings but then secrets start to unravel about ricky and unfortunately he was only with Charlie because of our inheritance and our money that she got because he is in severe debt. So he's only with Charlie because he thought that she was going to pay off the debts for her. So that's a bit sad for her. So they break up, rightly so, they break up, kick that twat to the curb. And Matt reveals the reason that he's with his fiance. They don't love each other. They got together because she was going through a downward spiral and he wanted to keep her safe so she wouldn't do it again. After she, after his fiance ends up in the hospital, she basically tells him that she doesn't like, she doesn't love him and they don't know why they're in this relationship. So they kind of like break it off as well. And then he finally admits to um, Charlie how he feels and she admits to him how she feels because they've had these feelings rekindling for over a year without telling each other and then they finally do tell each other and yeah that's where it goes from there so it's like a slow burn romance and it's really wholesome it's really nice and yeah it's a really good reader so i gave this one four stars so if you want to pick this up then i would recommend so yeah that was my december wrap up and that was my ratings that i gave each of the books obviously i only had one five star in there but the rest are four stars so it's still not a bad rating i really enjoyed all them books i enjoyed like dipping into an, a different genre that I'm not really used to reading. So it was really nice to have a change. And I did like them, so bonus, guys. So anyways, I'm going to end this uh, this video here. So if you enjoyed it, please do smash the like button down below. Subscribe to the channel, thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys. Good night. Welcome to the audio.